when you think about a life cycle, the building once had a very active, flourishing life, and then it deteriorated, and rather than dying, it was really resuscitated and brought back to life. And thus came the opportunity to create the museum at Eldridge Street. A group of preservationists, urbanists, saw this place locked up. And what had happened was the immigrants came, and then when they had more economic freedom, they moved away from the Lower East Side. There was not enough of a congregation to sustain and maintain the building. And in the late 40s, the sanctuary had to be locked, and the prayer was on the lower level. It was early in December of 1982 that I first visited the Elder Street Synagogue. When I walked in, I was rather startled, really startled, because as we walked in, the pigeons just flew out from everywhere. It was hair-raising. The dust was so thick that you could write your initials and the benches. No one had celebrated the group of East European Jews who had come from the shtetl life. That generation had been fleeing the pogroms and the persecution of Eastern Europe. When they finally realized freedom to worship was part of the fabric of society, this group of Jews felt comfortable to build a building and to exuberantly let the world know that they were Jewish. The Eldridge Street Project's goal was to restore and preserve this building in an authentic way. It took 20 years and close to $20 million to bring it back. We had to be very strategic in the beginning. The first step was really just securing the building. This extraordinary fixture hanging from the middle of the sanctuary, our architects said it has no business still hanging. We were afraid it would fall any day, and that's when I started saying, this fixture, this building, is held up by a string to heaven. The artisans, the contractors, they all worked on this building with the goal of bringing it back authentically. Many buildings are saved, but they're saved with new. The only new thing in this building is our beautiful east window which was designed by Kiki Smith and collaborated with Deborah Gantz. In looking for the future, it's important to have the one element that can say, this was yesterday, this is today, and this window really represents tomorrow. Today, this still is a house of worship, and we are a non-sectarian museum. We have three major tours. We have about three to 5,000 visitors who are school children. We have weddings and bar mitzvahs. Our signature event is egg rolls and egg creams. We are today in the heart of Chinatown. This past year, there were about 9,300 people who came and took part in all the activities, both Chinese and Jewish. And it's really a collaboration and celebration of our cultures. So it has become one of the museums for people to understand what it means for Jews and what it means for all peoples to cherish their places and preserve them. When the house is filled and you see the generations come together, the fact that this building is so alive again, it, it, it's, it's remarkable.